And we've talked about this many times, how the term lemon, generically, as it applies to cars, was originally directly associated with an exclusive small group of specific models, like the Pinto, the Gremlin, and the Vega. Although, for the record, if you search lemon car into Google today, the top image results are a Subaru Outback, Dodge Challenger, and Tesla Model S. Good news is, only two of those are owned by lemon staffers. Man, Subaru people, Tesla people, Dodge Challenger people, together at last. See, we as humans really aren't that different from each other after all. But way back before any of those fine machines, Pinto included, there was a car almost universally panned by critics, shunned by the buying public, plagued by quality problems, and discontinued after three years in an inflation-adjusted loss of over two billion dollars. And the grill looks like a It really sets the high watermark for all lemons to come. Of course, we're talking about the Edsel. Okay, plenty has been written about the failure of the Edsel, so we won't dwell on that here. Suffice it to say, Edsel was a brand of huge, ugly cars built by Ford and bought by nobody. In other words, perfect for the 24 hours of lemons. Somehow, 16 years into the series' existence, we had yet to see an Edsel on the track, despite having Pintos, Gremlins, and Vegas show up on the regular. That all changed in the fall of 2022 at The Ridge when Piston Liberation Front debuted the first ever Lemons Edsel. Well, actually this wasn't the team's first race with this car, but it was the first race where the car actually moved under its own power. Uh, we're getting ahead of ourselves a little bit. Piston Liberation Front is one of our favorite Lemons teams, by which we mean they build dumb stuff that looks amazing and cause them endless problems. Except that one time they raced to Previa, which ran flawlessly. Yeah, they've also run a Jaguar-powered Corvair, an 80s Jaguar-powered 50s Jaguar, and when one of the team members discovered a 58 Edsel in his neighbor's cow pasture, the initial plan was Jaguar-powered Edsel. Yeah, and after a while they realized, what are we, idiots? Let's instead do what normal people would do and make a Motorhome 440-powered Edsel. They didn't come to that decision completely on their own. They raced primarily in the Pacific Northwest region of Lemons, and that's where we have local Mopar guy Tom Hergert serve as a Lemons judge. He's really more than just a Mopar guy. He runs an entire Mopar restoration and parts business called Rocket Restorations. As such, he's got old Mopar junk sitting around the back of his shop in piles. Now, one of those pieces of Mopar junk was a big block 440 V8 taken from a motorhome and a 727 automatic transmission to match. And the team figured, yeah, that's way smarter than a Jaguar swap, which, relatively speaking, probably true. Now, aside from the engine swap, there aren't a lot of Edsel hot rod parts out there for road racing. So the suspension is mostly stock. The team did discover that Chevy Astro van parts are a good source of brake upgrade hardware. So they bought an entire Astro from a maintenance guy at the Tillamook Creamery there in Oregon. So the brakes are the big ones from the all wheel drive Astro. That same van also provided the excellent set of American Racing Outlaw two wheels. In a previous episode of Lemons World, we talked about the Ford Probe and how the speed secrets come from gleaning some parts off of the Mercury Mystique. There are some parallels here with the Edsel and using the Chevy Astro van parts as the super secret performance upgrades. And with that in mind, the only high tech mod on this Edsel is the addition of electric power steering from a Toyota Prius. You're not turning that barge without it, according to Team Captain Russ. As we mentioned before, the Edsel's official debut was spent entirely on the sidelines as they unsuccessfully struggled with arguably the most reliable part of the car, the 727 Automatic. But after they finally got a combination with that transmission that worked, according to Russ, if you're gonna do something once, it's worth doing three times, the team showed up for their second event and dominated. 
Well, sort of. Despite running with essentially zero mechanical issues during the weekend and having no black flags and running efficient pit stops, the Edsel was so incredibly slow that it finished in the bottom third of the field. Yeah, looking at the lineup for that race, we thought that there was going to be a great rivalry between the Edsel and the 74 Nova straight six swapped 1947 style master from low road racing. But compared to the Edsel, the style master was essentially an F1 car. And this led to a debate. The Edsel was obviously a favorite for our grand prize, the Index of Affluency, and they ran a nearly perfect race other than that small detail of being significantly slower than a 47 style master was a bottom third performance good enough for ioe the answer of course it was one we couldn't envision an event where the edsel would perform any better than it did and two look at it it's an edsel every second you don't subscribe or watch one of these videos Another Vega is sent to the crusher. Won't you help us save Classic?